Uh, hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to the Super Throw Bros YouTube channel. I am Voldega. <laughs> I'm Violoth over here. I'm also lost today, so. Oh, well, here, this light might help. Oh, let there be light. Okay. Oh, did you not even turn on your 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 room light yet? <laughs> what are you doing? Um, it was it was like bright enough in here. Yeah, that's that's like you my know, that's me when perpetually. When your future's this bright, sometimes you like to wear shades. I wear my sunglasses <laughs> at night. Oh shoot! Okay. I didn't. I should have done that. Okay. Um... I don't know what I'm doing. I don't even remember what Pokemon I have. It's only been yeah, a week it's for been you. A long time, and now I'm like, uh. For our viewers, it has only been a week, but for us, oh, yeah. well, it has because... been it has been a month and a half. We like to like get ahead and then fall behind and then, you know, dance in a circle. You know, whatever. Yeah, we just we just play whatever. <laughs> and then not only that, but we've been playing we've been playing Emerald with like fucked up Pokemon. <laughs> Hey, that's one way to put it. Dude. <laughs> I don't know that I would have put it that way, but I mean I mean, yeah, they're they're fusion Pokemon. They're 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 jacked up Pokemon. That's, that's, uh, 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 I mean that's just what happened. If you two, took two Pokemon and put them in a blender and then you added just a little bit of uh Wolverine's blood for <laughs> for the regeneration. I, I guess this is what happens. Or or you know the movie The Fly? Yeah. Help me, help me. If you put two Pokemon in the same <laughs> transporter and sent yeah. them across. <laughs> there we go. There we go. That's what we did. We went over to Bill's house. And you know how Bill does mix <laughs> Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh. Uh, Magneton, I don't think, he has Levitate, so I can't mud bomb him. Yeah, that is, that is very true. Which is not very nice. I don't like when they do that stuff. Haha. <laughs> -ha. I actually. What, what? The scientist withdrew his Pokemon. Screw off, scientist. What? If I just did this. Bam. I probably should have just used Dark Pulse again. Yeah, I just totally should have just used Dark Pulse. Oh, a Magma Bomb is going to do to me, but not much. Awesome. Great. So, um, I just need to let you know, because I need to let everybody know that Andor is not only the greatest Star Wars show to ever yep. exist. <laughs> But it is the greatest TV show <laughs> to ever exist. Okay. So what? Uh, what puts it? Uh, what puts it so far up here now? Because like you've been bragging about it for a while, and I'm not trying to you know like downplay what you're saying here or anything. But I I, I gotta know what your deal is. Like you gotta know what my deal is. What my deal is is that like Star Wars has never really been about like you we all know star wars star wars is about like kids stuff and yay the empire is evil and yay the rebels are good and like good versus evil and woohoo and it doesn't even mention that like you know they blow up the death star and kill like you know 500 million people yeah um that that the that, that, that the rebels are are terrorists yeah um like we don't even really talk about that and what the hell oh okay i was like what the hell is that copycat shit anyway um and and not only that but like the writing in star wars and the acting in star wars has always been like you know pretty subpar you know it's okay. good for what it is but it's a fairy tale in in space and so you know it's a soap opera and it was written as a soap opera right gotcha, and so gotcha. we all know what star wars is about um, but Andor is, like, the most 
mature and well written and well acted and well directed show that I have ever seen literally in my life. Okay. I have never I have never in my life watched a show that was so Shakespearean in nature. Um that is just the highest level of the art possible in every facet. There is no like I mean the Rings of Power was great and the writing was pretty strong and the cinematography and everything else yada yada it was pretty strong. Game of Thrones is pretty strong as a as a TV show, but there's always like these um places where you're like, well that's kind of like awkward the way they gotcha. delivered that line or the acting is kind of uh, or like there's a few scenes here and there where you're like why is that there that's like, kind of weird and there's a lot of like sometimes there's some fat where you're like this is totally ridiculous like why am i watching this Got right it. um but andor is just i can't even describe it it's it's like watching a Shakespeare play, like that level of like academic writing, um, and and acting at like the absolute pinnacle of the art. Uh, there's not a single moment in the entire show so far. There's been ten episodes, and they're gotcha. each and they're each coming up to an hour long. And in ten hours of this show, close to ten hours of this show. Um, I like there hasn't been a single moment in this show that has been just subpar. Okay. Like there is no cheese. There's no silly Disney quips of like, oh, this is really dark. And so we need to like, you know, crack a joke so that it's not so serious. It is a show that takes itself very seriously and and it has every right to take itself seriously. Like, okay. there's some shows that take itself seriously, and you're like, this is kind of silly that it takes itself so seriously because it's not that serious. But this show takes itself seriously and absolutely 100% deserves to take itself seriously. Like, today episode 10 came out, and... Okay. And at the end of episode 10, one of the characters actually has a monologue. Now, how many TV shows has like a serious moment with a character who has a monologue and you're like, this is actually really epic. Um, it doesn't happen a whole lot where a character gets like a true monologue um in a show yeah, not not in, not in more recent times for sure like and this is like 90s tv for sure yeah but this is like shakespearean level monologue um okay in in this show at the very end of the show and it was like it brought me to tears like it followed like one of the most intense moments of the entire season um, and then right after that, it's like, you're like, okay, I think I'm done. My heart is palpitating because that was really intense and it was a really great action scene. And then it just goes to like a guy in an elevator and you're thinking, okay, it's going to be just like regular, like, okay, it's just like, it's the end of the episode. It's going to be a regular scene just to bring down, you know, lower the action a little bit, send us off on a good note. We'll be fine. But no, they just come out with a gut punch of the, just this epic monologue from one of these characters. And it just, I was crying because of the scene before. And I kind of was like breathing myself through what I had just witnessed at the end of that episode. And then they hit me with this monologue and, and I just had to sit through the credits and, and just like, collect myself before I like moved or did anything. It was, it, I mean, it's just that level of holy crap. I can't even believe what I'm witnessing in star Wars. Yeah. Huh. I, it, it is. It, I, I literally cannot tell you um, 
without just absolutely spoiling everything about what is happening you know it's and i think yeah, one of the sure. i'll have to go watch it anyway because i think i'm only on episode like three i haven't really been like keeping up keeping up with it you know what i mean yeah it like it's we it's weird because the first three episodes like you go into andor and you think okay i'm watching star wars so i know what to expect from star wars but it's just yeah. so different that it kind of is like it can kind of be a little off-putting at first that you're like this well, is I kind mean, of different it's, just, it, it's way more um story like star wars has story and i'm not trying to be like that because like if you if you look at star wars for what star wars is there's a lot more story to it than there are sci-fi effects even though there's a lot of sci-fi effects and just based off effects alone you can enjoy it you know mm -hmm. what i mean yeah yeah star wars has always been a visual spectacle yeah so like it, like but even so it still had a good amount of story with it mm -hmm. the level of story in andor though like it you have to pay attention you, and if you're not yeah. able to or willing to pay the kind of attention that you need to you're just not going to be able to follow it and that's where uh, i'm at currently with it is that i want to give it the uh attention it's due yeah and i just can't find uh time to give it the attention yeah. it's due you know what I mean? well yeah and i think i think a lot of people like and, and this might have been part of the reason that i got so emotional at the end of this episode was because i started also thinking about the people who are not giving this a chance because they look at it and they say, oh, it's about Andor, which is like a minor character in Rogue One that I don't even really care about. Um, and so a lot of people are just writing it off because of like, oh, it's it's Disney and it's about Andor, which is not really something that I'm excited for. And, um, you know, so they're they're sort of writing it off. But I'm like, you guys are missing out on one of the greatest television experiences that I have ever that I've ever had uh, well, in my life. I mean, it, it, not to be like that, but that's a, I mean, that's a pretty common practice for a lot of things though. Like the, the more in depth and whatnot that like that these uh, things get. And I think that's one of those reasons why it doesn't get published and stuff as often is just because people want to be entertained. Yeah. And, uh, and that's there's that... fewer people that want to like think to be entertained than just want to have like explosions yeah. in your face and comedy. It's it's very heady. You know, it's it's yeah. in your mind. It's very high level. Like you really have to be like invested in because they're not like I mean, it's like everywhere else. It's like the Empire is evil because Sidious evil. But like you don't see the Empire Emperor in this TV show. You only get like the bureaucracy and the background people just doing their job and like you know all all that stuff which is which is totally not this is like you know this is like the way the emperor empire runs and it's just people doing their job and, but you but you get the you get the fanatics right they show you the fa the fanaticism on both sides of this conflict and mm -hmm. and that's what that's what we got at the end of episode ten was was one of the characters was like you know what do you sacrifice for the rebellion, and his monologue was like what do I sacrifice and it was like all this stuff that I sacrifice for the for the rebellion but you get like this is a this monologue could have happened from somebody from the empire uh, empire too is yeah. like you know it, it's not just it's it's that this guy is an absolute zealot. Um, but we have to sort of feel for him because he's the good guy, I guess. Um, and yeah, so could it, be the good guy. Uh, yeah, I mean he's he's on the rebellion's side, right? And so, yeah. But yeah, it's oh no, petrol just sort of changed form here, and now I've got a fight, and I'm not prepared for. Uh, I am not prepared for a, prepared for a rocket leader fight right now. I uh, I wasn't really expecting. I'm glad that all the statues have two rockets that attack you after every statue that you set off the alarm, because I need these to level. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah, but yeah. I 
It is just <laughs> it's so a slog. Grueling. It's a yeah. It is an absolute slog. But I, everybody is uh, forty-two or higher now. So I nice, mean, nice, nice. That's yeah. good. That is good. But yeah, What's I think your highest? my highest is forty-nine. Oh geez, okay. <laughs> And you're like two badges ahead of me, huh? Uh, one bet. One. You almost have all. You, yeah. You yeah. almost have all eight badges, though. Yeah, I have seven badges. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm doing like the um, I'm doing the rocket uh, the rocket hideout right now. Who did I? Oh, you know what? Suck. Okay, I'll use everybody. Um, yeah, I'm doing the rocket hideout. The or not the rocket hideout, but the 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 rockets take over the radio tower. Okay. Um, and I'm doing that, and then I think after the rockets take over the radio tower, that uh, I'll be able to go on to the Dragon City and get the last badge. But it, it's like, but that's where you're at. It's like it's the rocket hideout, then it's the badge, then it's the rockets take over the radio tower, and then, um, and then you're caught up with me. So you're not uh, like, other than slogging through that absolute craziness of a situation there. You're not that far behind me. But, um... I mean, I, I'm high enough ahead that, like, for the most part, I'm one or two hitting these guys anyway, so it's not like it's oh, a big that's good. deal. But. That's good. I had to keep going back because I was running out of PP. Oh. I was, like, trying to use the time to level up my lobies, and... Uh, it was just not, um, it was just not working well for me. This guy has six Pokemon. I don't know. I'm going to have to use, uh, I'm going to have to use, uh, items. I mean, this guy that I'm fighting right now is like all right around 40, like mid forties. Oh good. He was paralyzed. Ha ha ha. Oh. Um, so... He's fine. I'm still getting really good XP on all of these fights. Like, it's only taken me like two or three. Ouch. Okay. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> I retract my previous statement. Well, like, I just. Okay. I think I know what's going on here. What'd you do? Uh, activated a trap. Oh. Oh! Oh, shoot! The skunk yeah. tank just one Full shot my... self-destruct every time I, I... Oh. This, yeah, this oh. skunk tank just, uh... Um... Uh, just used crunch on me. I think this is not gonna affect him. Yeah, he's dark type. Fuck. Oh, good, he's paralyzed. That's nice. Um, I do not have anything to fight dark type. Yeah. What is good against dark type? I forget. Oh man, one shot, another Pokemon. Let's see here. Shit. Um. Oh, cool. Porky's faster than these Voltorbs, and his Mud Bomb can one-shot him, so. Oh, that's good. I don't think this is even going to... God bless it, protect. What is dark? Um, Defender is dark. Fighting. Why are all my Pokemon poisoned? Okay, that was nice. Close combat did did its job. But oh, the other thing that I love about Andor is that when it does go into action scenes, they're not campy. Okay. They're like really seriously well choreographed action scenes. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Um, and so like, oh, Leaf Storm. Hey, what does Leaf Storm do? Because uh, Grass Move that is really good would be really nice right now. 140? Uh, sharply reduced. I don't want that. That's too much. Too much badness. Um, 
Like, oh, Leaf Blade, though. I will take Leaf Blade. That is for definite sure. I think, yeah, Leaf Blade way over. Oops. No. Um, like, uh, um, when, uh, um, when they do go, like, in Book of Boba Fett, there's, like, there's a, uh, did you watch Book of Boba Fett? I don't think that I've watched that one yet. Okay. Well, there's, like, a chase through, uh, Mos Eisley, okay. um, with, like, a bike chase. Um, <laughs> And, uh, um, it's like, you'd think like, oh, it's a motorcycle chase, but like, you feel like the way that it's shot, you really feel like these people are going like maybe 15, 20 miles an hour, if that. And it's okay. like, it, it, the, and the, fil the, the way that it's fr shot is just silly and it doesn't feel, it just doesn't feel good. Um, okay. Uh, and, and it just is like really campy and like, oh guys, we got a little, uh, uh, um, a little bike chase and like they, they film it like it's supposed to be like this really intense chase. Um, and they try to it like take it seriously. Like yeah. They try to take it seriously, but you're like, dude, you're going like 30 miles an hour. I could run faster than you're going right now. <laughs> Like Not fuck thirty dude. miles an hour, but I feel I, where you're coming from. I know, but like it does feel like that. It feels like, oh my god, dude, I can run faster than you're moving right now, and this is not convincing me at all. Uh, <laughs> this, uh, uh. That this is a high speed chase through Mos Espa at all. This is stupid. And then there's like there's like a shootout in one of the episodes where they have a shootout and like not only are the characters on one side, like, in the most ridiculous out-of-place costumes that you could possibly imagine, they're like, oh, it's a biker gang in Mas Espa, but, like, they're, like, bright colors, and, like, it just looks, it just, they look weird, they don't look like they fit. And then they're, gotcha. like, they're, like, shooting at each other, but, like, in the middle of it, one guy, like, does, like, a spin and then shoots, like, between his legs and shit. Like, it's just, like, the weirdest, most stupid, like, out, out of the world. Like, why did you spin to shoot your gun? It doesn't, like, what the fuck did that accomplish? Um, and it didn't even look cool. It's just, like, weird shit like that. And then there's, like, in, in Obi-Wan Kenobi, did you watch Obi-Wan? Yes, I did. So, the chase scenes with Leia. Yeah. Um, were, like, ridiculous. You're like the the one in the city was like f I could I, I could say okay you know what I get the one in the city because it's like trying to chase a little girl uh, through a crowded you know place like that public place is like yeah. okay that's fine I've experienced that but like she's in the middle of the forest and she's like sliding on the ground and like little twigs stop the guy and oh, they just yeah. go oh no she got away <laughs> and I'm like this is the most ridiculous thing ever why are you doing this there's none of that in Andor <laughs> there's Co comb the desert <laughs> <laughs> we ain't found shit <laughs> oh. <sighs> but anyway uh, yeah, no, I, I I get what you're saying though. Like, there's none of that in Andor. It is clean. There is no fat at all in these action scenes. It is down to the wire, high stakes, uh, shit. Um, well, that's cool. Yeah, it, it's it's so it's like when it does do action, which is rare because it's mostly like a it's a well. I mean, the, the in the interviews with the um. Uh, with the director, he says that they were going for like a World War II period drama. Um, is sort of gotcha. what they were going for. And so, um, you know, if you approach it as this is a period drama movie, um, this is a period drama flick, then, um, you know, you're like, I am not here for the Star Wars spectacle. I am here for the story and the characters and like... Well, like, you know, the high level stuff from a real person's point of view at that point, because yeah. like, this is why the people didn't look at it. Uh, God, he keeps hypnosing me. Um, they, the people didn't look at it like, oh my God, the Jedi, they're supposed to be here to save us. It, it's just like some old hokey religion because really like most people hadn't experienced it firsthand. And so this was like 
real people's life in mm-hmm. the you know yeah yeah it's yeah anyway um no everybody and yeah we've got just the one guy left yeah um everybody who has not yet seen and or who is watching this episode right now should really give it a shot because it really um it it really blows the top off of a lot of things that are coming out right now as far as just an enjoyable science fiction movie um i don't know how i avoided attack in my sleep (laughs) that was really cool (laughs) anyway (laughs) we're at the end of this episode Please like, comment, subscribe, hit the little bell icon so you know when we upload new videos, and we'll see you on the next one. See you next time, guys. Bye.